Hi, and welcome to our program today. I know you're going to enjoy it. I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing this with you. If you've been enjoying our programs, I'd love you to hit the subscribe, subscribe button up there, the little bell, ding, ding, and uh, give us a like if you've enjoyed what we're sharing and certainly leave a comment. But I'm going to talk today about the spirit of Antichrist. And people have been asking the question of me. They're saying, Tim, is the Antichrist spirit at work? What we're seeing on the planet right now is so crazy and so much seemed to be raised up against the body of Christ. Surely the spirit of Antichrist is on the earth right now. Now, I want to differentiate between the spirit of Antichrist and the one called the Antichrist or the beast uh, or the son of perdition, the one who is going to rise up full of the devil in the latter times, right at the end, midway through the, the seven-year period of the Great Tribulation, who sits up in the throne, uh, in the temple rather. Uh, we read it in Thessalonians. He takes his place, sits up and says, I'm God, right at the halfway mark of the seven years of the Great Tribulation. I want to separate the person from a spirit of Antichrist that is moving across the earth and I think bringing people to a point where they ultimately will embrace the Antichrist. If you go with me, please, to the book of 1 John and uh, back here, 1 John and chapter 4, I'm going to read a scripture to you and it says this, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. The spirit of Antichrist. The word Antichrist is made up of two words, anti, which is opposite, opposed to, instead of, in place of, but particularly opposed to and opposite. And Christos, which of course is the name Christ, the name Jesus Christ means Jesus the Anointed One. Jesus the Anointed, Jesus the Messiah or Jesus the Anointed. So it means anti the Anointed or anti the Anointing. And so we read that the spirit of Antichrist then is a spirit raised up that is anti the anointing of Jesus. Well, we get an understanding of the fact that Satan hates the anointing. I believe he despises the anointing. He wants to bring down the anointed. He wants to bring people down that are anointed. He wants to shut down the anointing and the moving of God. And so let's have a look and go back into the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28. And uh, we read of the king of Tyre a description of the king of Tyre, but it's a very interesting description because it peels away the covering of this godless king and reveals the power or the force of who was driving him. And we see uh, a bringing forth of Satan himself. He's described. And it says uh, of this one that was controlling the king of Tyre, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden the garden of God. And we do indeed know that Satan was there tempting Adam and Eve in the garden. It says every precious stone was your covering. The sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the turquoise, the emerald uh, with gold, the workmanship of your timbrels and pipes were prepared for you on the day that you were created. So he is a created being. He was there in the garden. He's covered with precious stones. And it seems that he also had tablets and pipes and there was music within him. So he must have reflected the glory of God, radiating beams all over heaven. But also there was music and there were tablets and pipes that were in him, which is very interesting. Timbrels and pipes. And the Bible says here, you were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you, says God. You were the anointed cherub that covers. Now, anointed, set apart, 
and carrying God's anointing for task. He was a cherub. Who were the cherubs? Well, we read of the cherubim, and that's plural, cherubim, the plural of cherub. The cherub is not like one of those little fat baby angels that fly around with a bow and arrow, firing an arrow so people fall in love. That's just nonsense. The cherubim was a guardian angel, a powerful guardian angel. There at the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve were put out, two cherubim were placed at the gates with flaming swords to keep them out of there. They were guardians of the anointing, guardians of God's presence and power. And we also find them on the mercy seat with the Ark of the Covenant when blood was placed, when Moses went in or Aaron and blood was sprinkled on the mercy seat, suddenly the glory, the Shekinah power of God was manifest between the wings of the cherubim. And so they were guardians of the anointing, guardians. They were intimately involved with the Shekinah presence and power of God. And here we read, and obviously speaking of Satan, you were the anointed guardian, if you like, (coughs) guardian, the one who covers, protects, puts a wall around, guardian of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And God says, I establish you. I set you in with that role. He says, you're on the holy mountain of God. You walk backwards and forwards in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. And down in verse 16, it says, And I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. And we know why he fell. We know his attitude and so on. And so Satan knew the anointing of God. He knew the presence of God. He was a guardian of it. He himself was anointed but he carried the anointing. And so the greatest thing I think that he hates on the planet right now beside Jesus himself is the anointing and the anointing of Jesus that rests on his people. And right now we know that on this planet, there is a moving of a spirit, an unseen spirit. You can sense and feel and see what's going on. It is an opposing spirit that's raising up against the body of Christ at this time. And certainly it seems like for time it's had some effect in shutting down, closing down meetings, closing down revival meetings, closing down uh, evangelistic meetings. And it has been a, uh, an onslaught to do that. But why has it come? Why has it come? And I've been, I look at the Scriptures and I follow, I'm a great believer in having a, a strong understanding of eschatology But I also feel that Satan has come, as the Bible says, with great wrath, knowing that his time is short. And I think he's trying to shut down a move of God with everything possible. I personally believe that there is a breaking out of the anointing that he's tried to stifle, that he's tried to stop. In my own heart, I can feel a rising. I can see Christians rising. I can see churches rising. People that are beginning to say, we're not going to be held back. The anointing is not going to be held back. In fact, we are pressing in for the greatest manifestation of revival power that we've ever seen. I feel a hunger in my heart that says, hey, I want to go into the greatest place of the presence and power and the miracles of God that I've ever known or ever imagined. I think the enemy's done everything to stop a powerful move that's been coming. I do believe we're moving uh, towards the end of the age and the coming of Jesus, but I have that sense that there's going to be the greatest manifestation of signs, wonders and miracles that the world has ever seen. And the devil's been trying to stop it. But it's a little bit, I think, like trying to stop Niagara Falls with an umbrella to hold that water back. When God wants to move, God moves. And when God says, I put before you an open door that no man shall close, He opens a door and the power of God floods through that door 
God is in control, not the devil. No matter how much he tries to stop the anointing, he cannot stop the anointing of God. The restrainer, the praying church, the Holy Ghost filled mighty church of Jesus Christ shall restrain until the time comes when we're taken out. And I believe in the rapture of the saints. And I believe we'll go out at a time when we've had the most remarkable move of God across the earth. It might be soon. It might be a while down the track. I don't know when, but I know the enemy has tried to stifle and stop the power of God. He hates the anointing, but the power of God and the anointing of God is unstoppable. Excuse me, getting excited. Now I'm preaching. Now I'm preaching, but I'm excited. Hey, I shouldn't be banging the desk like that. That's not really what you do on television. You more teach quietly. But hey, we're going to win. God's, God's in your corner, my friend. That anointing on you can't be stopped. Get hungrier than you've ever been. Get more passionate than you've ever been. Get more desperate than you've ever, ever been. Because God's doing something, something significant in you and in me. Yes, the spirit of Antichrist is on the earth. But I've got bigger news than that. The spirit of Christ is on the earth. The spirit of Antichrist is on the earth, but the mighty anointing of the Son of God is being poured out and is going to be poured out with measure that the devil cannot stop for the glory of the name of Jesus. I'm optimistic. How about you? God bless you.